Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem I got from one of my subscribers and here's a problem. The following is hypothetical pathway involved in formation of eye color in insect species. White pigment is converted by product of gene A to vermilion pigment. White pigment also converted by product of gene B to brown pigment. Mix of both vermilion and brown pigments lead to red eye color. Genes A and B are linked and have map distance of 10 centimorgans. Females with the genotype A plus A, B plus B are test crossed. Further, in these females, the two genes are linked in cis. A plus and B plus alleles represent wild type alleles, while A and B are null alleles. The progeny of the test cross have individuals with four different eye colors. What is the expected ratio of individuals with eye color red, vermilion, brown and white in the progeny? And here is a variance to choose from. First of all, even before you will start solving this problem, I encourage you to get rid of notation as A plus and B plus and instead just use A dominant and A recessive instead of A plus and just small a. So dominant normal and recessive allele which defective and doesn't produce any product. That's why we also may call them uh, these recessive alleles as null alleles. So this is my first rule. Get rid of all notation that you don't like and use the one which you like. For example, another example not related to this problem would be I A, I B and I O in the ABO blood group system. And again, you don't have to use this notation. Instead, you can just write allele A, allele B and allele O. So as you see, it is much less clutter. So get rid of any clutter whenever you can. I also want to pay your attention to this phrase and what does it mean that two genes are linked in cis. Imagine that this is two homologous chromosomes and here we have gene A, here we have gene B and for example here we have uh, recessive allele A and recessive allele B. So this is what we call cis position when two dominant alleles are on the same chromosome and two recessive alleles also on the same chromosome. And here is the example of the transposition of the alleles. So in this case we are going to have one dominant allele and one recessive allele on the same chromosome. And on the other chromosome we will have recessive allele and dominant allele. So in this case we say that this is configuration which is trans configuration and this is cis just like in chemistry. When two groups are on the same side we say cis position when on the different sides of the molecule we say trans position. Now we can easily solve this problem. Take a look. The genotype of the female is A plus A, B plus B and we now using different uh, notation which is capital A small a and capital B small b. This is genotype of the female. So here is a notation for female. And we cross, not just cross, but test cross with male. What does it mean? That means that genotype of the male is going to be small a small a and small b small b. In this case we call this is test cross. So again female with genotype that is uh, heterozygous for both genes A and B we test crossed with a male. Now let me show you how this is going to look like on the chromosomes. So here is one chromosome, here is another chromosome and here is also two homologous chromosomes from the male side. And let's say somewhere here and here we have two genes, gene A and gene B. And we were told that female 
are heterozygous for gene A and for gene B, and it is in cis. That means that on one chromosome you have dominant allele A, dominant allele B, and on the other chromosome we have recessive allele A and recessive allele B. And the distance between gene A and B is 10 centimorgans. So where it is in our problem, it is here. Genes A and B are linked and have the map distance of 10 centimorgans. Linked means that these two alleles on the same chromosomes and not on the different chromosomes, and that means that they tend to be inherited together. The smaller distance between them, the least chances that crossing over is going to happen, and the greater chances that they would be inherited together. And the far away from each other these two genes, then there are more chances that crossing over is going to happen between them, and in the progeny we are going to find more recombinant product or recombinant chromosomes. Males are homozygous recessive, so the genotype small a small a and small b small b. And of course the distance between these two genes are the same, 10 centimorgans. Now let's find what kind of genotypes and phenotypes the progeny of such a cross can be, and we call this F1 generation. For example, from the female parent, progeny may get this chromosome without crossing over. This may happen, yes. So let's put this chromosome here, and it's going to be capital A and capital B here. And from the parent two, it doesn't matter this chromosome or this chromosome, it doesn't matter even if crossing over is going to happen here, it's still going to be the same genotype small a, small b. So let's put it here, small a, small b, the only variant possible to inherit from the male parent. Also from parent one, progeny may inherit this chromosome intact without crossing over, so it's going to be small a and small b alleles on this chromosome. From parent two, from male parent, no other variants, except that this is going to be chromosome with recessive allele A and recessive allele B. Now imagine that between gene A and B, crossing over happened. So what we are going to see in the progeny, we are going to see a new recombinant chromosome with dominant allele A and recessive allele B. So let's list it here. So with dominant allele A and recessive allele B. And from the side of the male parent, only one variant possible with recessive allele A, recessive allele B. But if crossing over is going to happen here, we're not only going to get one recombinant chromosome, we're also going to get another recombinant chromosome with recessive allele A and dominant allele B. So let's list it also with recessive allele A and dominant allele B. And from the male parent, we only can get one variant, recessive allele A, recessive allele B. Now let's analyze genotypes and phenotypes that we should see in a progeny in F1 generation. When all four alleles would be defective, then that means that protein and we are told that uh, we have a substrate which is white and no enzymes can change it to any other color. That means that this genotype means white, white phenotype. According to our problem, gene B converts pigment to brown. That means that here we have two recessive alleles, null alleles, this is also null allele, and we have one dominant allele, which convert our substrate, which is white, into brown. So let's put brown here, so brown. And according to our problem, gene A convert uh, substrate to vermilion pigment. Vermilion means bright red. So I put only three letters here because I don't have much space here. So this is going to be vermilion color of the eyes 
if uh, progeny would belong to this genotype capital A small a small b small b. And also a mix of both vermilion and brown pigment leads to the red eye color. The presence in this genotype of the dominant allele A means that a vermilion pigment would be produced and the presence of the functional dominant allele B means that brown pigment would be produced and mixture of these two pigments would be perceived as red. So this is going to be phenotype which we say is red, phenotypically red. So we have found that in a progeny we can find all four phenotypes, red, vermilion, brown and white. Now let's give uh, proportions or ratios of these phenotypes. Now probably the most critical part of our uh, walkthrough because most of the people make a mistake here at the very last step thinking that 10 centim centimorgans means 10 percent probability of crossing over and that means that we are going to have 10 percent in our progeny of this variant and 10 percent of this variant chromosome. This is not so. So it's going to be 5 percent of this variant and 5 percent of this variant. Together they give us 10 centimorgans and that means that the rest 90 percent would be 45 percent this variant and 45 percent this variant. But as you see none of the answers is given in percent form. Now let's convert these numbers to ratios. Take a look. For example 45 is 9 times greater than 5 or if we divide 45 by 5 we are going to get 9. So our ratio is 9 to 1 to 1 to 9. But again don't hurry up to choose answer C because I got this ratio because I just choose to represent information in this order but I also can use different order and answer D is also possible correct answer because give us 1991. So let's check our question first. What is the expected ratio of individuals with eye color which is red, vermilion, vermilion, brown, brown and white, white. So we gave correct uh, order according to our question. So our choice is going to be answer C. This is going to be correct phenotypic ratio in a progeny. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.